Hey, what's going on guys? Dan Kale here from Liquidation Pros and today and tomorrow I wanted to make a slightly different video than normal. If you're uh, familiar with my channel, normally I do um, videos about buying liquidation products and selling them on eBay and Amazon to make extra money. Um, well, part of that is the extra money part. My wife and I were able to um, buy and expand a, a little patio area, buy a gazebo. And there wasn't a whole lot of information about the uh, BJ's, Berkeley, Jensen, 10 by 12 um, wood post gazebo. So I wanted to do a quick video. Um, I'm thinking I'll show kind of what it takes, what you know, what's included in the gazebo, and maybe like a time lapse of how to install it. Um, only because like when I'm buying stuff like that, I really like to go and watch YouTube videos to show me at least like an idea of what to expect, what kind of tools I would need, how long to plan for. Um, there are a couple of reviews on it. Some people are saying, you know, six to eight hours. Other people say it could take 12 hours to install. Um, I had to actually expand the pad since it's a 10 by 12 that we had a concrete pad that was already 10 by 10. So I had to add two feet to that. And um, currently I'm waiting for that to dry. That just got finished up this morning. But in the meantime, I can do like the unboxing and start preparing for everything. And then tomorrow um, I can start setting the other posts. Actually today I should be able to set two of the corner posts. Um, and also I'll be able to give you an idea of the actual measurements of the gazebo. It, I believe it said it was um, 10 foot one by 12 foot. Um, but actually we can jump out. Um, I will say that it was extremely heavy. I did pick it up with a small utility trailer and it took um, three of us, two BJ work, BJ's workers, BJ's Wholesale Club, two workers and myself, everything we had to hoist, them up, hoist the boxes up just six inches to slide into the trailer. And then the second box had to be hoisted up even higher. Um, and then I, I, dro I drug them off the trailer by myself. But um, basically where they're sitting now, where they're dropped off, um, I will have to break them apart and move the boxes or move the contents in the boxes one by one. So anyhow, that's enough rambling. Let's jump out and open these boxes up and uh, see what this thing looks like. All right, so here's the utility trailer I used. It's like, um, it's about four and a half by eight and a half feet. Uh, it's just like a custom homemade job that I bought. Uh, it works pretty good though. And then these are the boxes. As I said, I just literally slid them out of the trailer onto the ground, put some cardboard down. Uh, I, I picked them up yesterday in the rain yesterday, so I did cover it up with a tarp, but. Um, All right, so this here is what it looks like. I'm sorry, guys. This, uh, I'm not sure how good this video is going to be uh, because it is super windy out, uh, pretty gusty today. We had some pretty bad storms yesterday, but um, that's what it looks like. It's it says 10 foot one um, by 12. Typically, um, for these types of things, that means the maximum. So even like the overhang on the top, that would be that distance. Uh, and I'm going to have to confirm that because my pad is only my pad is 10 foot three by 12 foot six. So I'm hoping that um, this is the max dimensions and not, it obviously wouldn't be the inner dimensions, so I should be good, but that's one thing I'll be able to confirm. Um, as you can see, there's the UPC, if you wanna look it up, um, the BJ's number, 185650. Um, and we bought it from the store. It was on sale for $1,100. And then it was really, I think it's regularly $11.99, they had $100 off. And online, if you had to buy it online, it's $13.99, but I believe that includes shipping. I'll post the links, um, I'll post the online link from BJ's down below. Um, so let's see what this thing looks like. Um, I already cut the straps, so that way I could hold the camera and do this. But as you can see, they have a really nice, um, like plywood framing system in here to make sure everything is held in pretty good. Throw the trash right in the trailer. Right, so this looks like roof panels. So yeah, these are metal roof panels. Um, and then there's boxes underneath of that, different boxes of stuff. Um, and it looks like these bars just come off. They just kind of pop right off. And um, Really well packaged, I will say that. I don't think there's any way, anything, I mean, I guess you never know, but looking at how they put this together, they have it all framed out with uh, uh, 45 degree or 90 degree corners. 
so it looks pretty good um let me unbox this i'll try to set you guys up on the on the little tripod and um i'll start pulling everything out i need to get to the direction so i can confirm that well let me show you the pad real quick so basically this pad was an old uh shed the shed wasn't there when we bought the house but it's already got a like a nice little entryway and going up to it we had like a wine barrel and some chairs on it um, but it really wasn't a great place to sit uh, because i already have a my outdoor shed over there um, now it was 10 foot three by 10 foot three so 10 foot three 10 foot three and then last night and today i dug out and added another uh, two foot six inches to cover so this is all new concrete that will be cured the, um, the ends will be cured tonight and then the middle will be cured tomorrow i ran out i was about two bags short so i just left the uh i left the middle out and then this morning i went and got two more bags from home depot so that's what the pad looks like this is where it's going i'm pretty excited to uh to see what it looks like but let me go ahead and do the unboxing and i will keep you guys uh on the video so you can check it out and see what it entails i'll also lay out any tools and what you will need to install this gazebo All right, so I started pulling everything out. Um, I took the roof panels out and I found the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what all I'm gonna need. Uh, according to the instructions, you're gonna need a drill, tape measure, hammer, screwdriver, ladder, and then it says two to uh, two plus three. So five people is what it says to put together. Um, I'm gonna try to do most of the prep work and um, getting everything ready that I can before I start seeing if anyone is available to help me. My neighbor should be able to help or my wife. Um, so it has all the diagrams and I'll show um, I'll show better close-ups of all this for you guys. But for now I'm going to um, take this back and finish unpacking everything. All right, so I'm getting ready to open um, box number two. I disassembled and um, split out box number one. These are all the roof panels, all the little, the metal uh, panels. So far, everything looks pretty good. Um, pretty thin, I'd say uh, like a 16th of an inch thickness. Nothing too crazy, so it should be pretty easy to manage those. And then um, these are all the, all the framing for the roof. So that was in box number one. And then all the different mounting, mounting uh, framing parts, as well as the instructions 
Uh, I have the instructions here and then all the hardware as well. So that, that was all in number one. Make sure that doesn't blow away. And let's go ahead and look at box number two. So this is box two. I just cut the, the banding on it and go ahead and see what's in here. Now this one might've gotten a little wet. Okay, this one has all the posts. And, wow. This is all the mountain posts. And what's interesting, there are the, the six by sixes. Uh, and then all these are probably the, uh, I guess what you would call like the trusses that go across the front that all have to be put together. Um, it looks like they're kind of like a tongue and groove system where these would mount to each other to make it longer. Uh, the entire length of the box is only about seven feet. So you have to, anything longer than that, you have to put together. Let's, um, let's start unboxing this because I'm really curious to see what the posts look like. Everything looks like, um, like an engineered kind of plywood. Um, as you can see that. And we noticed that in the store, I did not expect it to be solid wood, but I was, I was wondering if the posts would be solid and I won't know until I get them out. So let's, uh, let's get you back on the, on the mount here and I will start unboxing all this. Sorry for the lighting guys, um, <clears throat> but here's everything laid out. Um, have your posts, all the rest of the wood framing um, that needs to be mounted and bolted together to create the gazebo. Um, you can see looking closely that it is like a plywood, um, like a formed wood. So I'm not, I knew pretty much, was pretty sure of that, but it is really heavy duty and solid. And it does have a really nice coating on it. Um, it's pretty smooth yet it has a cool looking texture to it so overall I'm gonna be happy with it um, but just so you know it is not solid wood and sorry for the wind but I need to get this done today and start to uh, get a game plan on how to put this all together
and then it's really well organized as far as the different hardware packs are all labeled so you have one two three four five six and then they actually give you two backups the backup hardware for pack two and then just a random backup hardware pack um, the instructions are pretty vague so you have all your parts and then like this is what you get for the schematic of how to put it together and what you have to do is if you see if you want more information about say figure four you have to go over here to the different figures and find where figure four is and then it'll give you a close-up of how to put that together so like step one uses hardware pack one and there should be everything in this hardware pack to do everything here you see here until you get to hardware pack two which is step two so that's kind of cool that they have it all separated that'll make things a little bit easier um and and then while i'm waiting for kind of the wind to die down and my concrete to dry i can start putting together a lot of these these beams here um because these all have to be assembled before they go up onto the gazebo now what's interesting is it doesn't give any measurements or like layout information because they want you to put it together as you go um so that i'm used to when you build something you put like the posts in so you put the mounts in and then you build it off the mounts i think with this you you build it kind of like a pop-up you build it up and then you screw it all down make sure to put the beams are level um, and screw it down when you're finished so just keep that in mind i don't know the actual measurements yet but i will uh, at the end give you the exact measurements so you know for sure if it'll fit your current application but there's a st second stage of putting this together there's step three hardware pack three so That was, this is a uh, step four. And then, I'm not sure what five and six are. Because currently that is all, I see step four. Power pack four. I'm not 100% sure what five and six. Oh, they may be four. Or there may be another pack of instructions somewhere that I didn't see. No, I don't think so. But I'll let you know if I find any other instructions. But it looks like this goes all the way to the final bolt in of the base. So I think that would be it. I'm not sure yet what hardware pack five and hardware pack six are. But anyhow, I'm gonna start um, putting this stuff together. That's pretty much it for the unboxing part. It should give you a general idea. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it for the price. You know, and most uh, most things you pay for what you get, and for 1,100 bucks, I think it's gonna be a pretty good a pretty good product. And um, if you uh, if you watch, I'm gonna do a time lapse of, of installing it and putting it all together. So I will record the process. Um, but anyhow. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned or there should be a link below for the full video. Uh, but that's the end of the unboxing video. Once again, my name is Dan Kale with Liquidation Pros. And I hope you're having a great, great day. And like and subscribe. Thank you. Hey guys, wanted to give you a quick update. Um, I wasn't able to do a time lapse video. My GoPro had died after I was filming the unboxing. And I didn't have the time to wait for it to actually charge up. I need to get another battery for it. So anyhow, I can give you a quick update on where we stand. Um, this is the framing. We did get the framing up yesterday. Um, it took me a little bit longer because I also had like some other landscaping I needed to do. This was a big drop off here and all the dirt that I had to dig out uh, from, the, to, from the extension of the pad, I moved all that and did a few other things. Um, but couple things to note the the box says it's 10 foot one by 12 feet well when you actually measure it my pad is 10 feet 10 feet three inches and you see how that's overhanging there so same on this side 
So I'm gonna have to uh, take the grinder and cut those off. I'm not concerned about, uh, I think three bolts. Uh, I'm using these, the Tapcon, um, I'll show you, they look like these, the tap, Tapcon concrete anchors. So I'm thinking three of those will be fine. Uh, three out of the four. I mean, this thing is so heavy and solid. I don't think it would go anywhere. The only reason you may want, uh, you, the only reason you would even use them is for like a hurricane or something. This thing is not going to be affected by the wind. It's, it is very stable once it's all put together. Um, we were able to get the frame together with just two people, myself and my wife. I mainly um, put all the boards, prepped everything, and then she helped me with putting the beams up. So the way I did it was... Um, I set, I set one, I set the two posts up, these two posts. Um, so this post here and this one, we stood those up by themselves. She held on to this one. Um, I held on to this one and hoisted the beam up and just put in the top, the long bolt. And then we switched places. She held this one and I came over, put the other bolt in on this side and held this one and then tightened it up and then kept, we went all the way around. So went from this one to that one, to that one, to that one. It did fall over on us once, but luckily there was no damage really done. Uh, just a couple little scratches, nothing major. Uh, but that was mainly because it was so windy yesterday. Uh, we had like 50 mile an hour gusts here and now it's, now it's obviously pretty nice out. Um, a couple other things I would say, you're gonna wanna have the, um, like the hex size bits. So I think I have one. Um, actually, it's on, it's probably on my drill. So instead of using um, instead of using this provided Allen key, you're gonna want the actual the hex key on the drill. This helps speed that up. And then you can just I would get them close and then just hand tighten them so you don't strip them out. But to give you an idea, um, this one beam is five boards that you have to screw and bolt together. And then I believe it's the same here, five boards here. You can see it's actually kind of um, split there like that. But it's, I mean, it's very solid. And from the outside, it doesn't really look that noticeable. And I'm sure once the framing and all is up, because you really only see, let me come from this side, the lighting's kind of bad there. My concrete's dry so I can actually walk on it. See from this side. But so anyhow, that ends up being, um, it's six of these bolts and then 18 screws to hold that all together. And then these go on after the fact, this is another four bolts. Um, and each of these beams, there are uh, there's a long bolt that goes all the way through and then there's a big screw a big screw style bolt that goes that lags into it um, I mean overall it really isn't that bad uh, I could definitely do it quicker now that I've done this part of doing one uh, any other I would say too it was nice having it's nice having this table obviously it's a mess now but it was cleared off and it's also nice having these um, grips here the quick grips because what happens is when you're trying to put these together i like to get it i like to get it in pretty snug but to where the boards wasn't completely secured yet and then flip it upright like you see it here upright stand it upright on the table and tighten it up so you know that it's actually um it's actually flush going all the way down and there's no um there's no shifting in the board it's a straight you know perfectly straight down if you do it flat on the table, there is a little bit of wiggle room and you could tighten it up crooked. So, and then in any of the spots where it was a little bit of like bow, I used the, um, the little quick grips there and, and tightened it up this way, one on the top and bottom, squeezed it together to make it flush and then screwed it together. So, um, another thing I would say is for, for the bolts, um, it's 11 16th is the size for a socket and um, and then I just I put on one of the quick drivers um, I put this quick driver on hook that up to my drill my impact drill and tighten them up that way so 
I would say that's a definitely must have. You don't want to do that by hand. You will need a wrench um, for the other side to hold the bolt still, but that was a pretty big time saver. Um, I'm obviously going to move those boards. Well, I'm waiting for the concrete to dry, but we wanted to get started and just kind of laid it across so it didn't put any impressions in the new concrete. So that's it for the first uh, the first stage. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to start on the the roof now. So I'll give you I'll do a quick uh, a quick video when the roof's done, so you guys can check that out. So guys, real quick, I forgot to mention. Um, so my pad was 10.3. If it was around like 10 foot six or 10 foot seven, I would have had just enough room because you can see I have about an inch and a half to two inches of overhang. So if I added like another four inches, uh, I would have been okay going width wise. And then as far as the length goes, I had, I had made the pad 12, um, 12 foot six inches, I think. So I had, I have, the, the pad's gonna end here. I have to take the board out, but I ended up having enough room. It might even be around 12 foot eight inches. So you wanna give yourself a little bit more for the plate. They when they do the measurements, they're counting it from the edge, from the edge of the beam. So that's 10-1 from here to the other opposite side. But that doesn't include all this plate and this plate for mountain. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out where you're gonna put it. It's actually more closer to like 10-7 uh, by like 12-7, something like that. Or, or even say like, just say 10-8 uh, by 12-8, uh, meaning 10 feet eight inches by 12 foot eight inches will give you uh, a little bit of room to play so but no big deal like i said i can just grind those ends off and i'm happy with having three three concrete bolts in um, that would be much stronger than if it was in into just a regular deck or something like that so i think we should be good anyhow i'm gonna get back get back to uh figuring all this out and starting to put this together <clears throat> uh, one more quick thing i forgot to mention i found that um, when you're putting these cross support beams in, <coughs> it takes two bolts up here and then two uh, screw style bolts here. Sorry, I'm in the tree a little bit. I think you can see those. What you're going to want to do is since there's no play with the bolts, they have to be lined up perfectly to fit the receiving threaded hole. Put those in first uh, because I did notice that some of the, the piloted holes for the screws were misaligned. It's easier to kind of angle your, your bolt, this, this screw bolt, um, if it's a little bit out of line and have it grip, or even if it's completely off. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they're off. I did measure, I did my cross measurements and we made everything square. Sorry, there's a couple of geese flying by. But um, like I said, the, everything was square. So I, it could be because I have this slightly higher uh, by about a, a half inch higher that that alignment was off. So you think if you lift up something, it's gonna um, change. So anyhow, that uh, I don't think it's that big a deal, but I did wanna tell you, it's gonna be easier if you put these in before you put in the ones on the bottom. So let me get back to it. All right, so I'm getting ready to put together the first uh, top bracket for the roof, which is this little square, which is gonna be up in the peak. Um, the one thing I wanted to show you is first of all, I found, um, not found, but I got out my drills, and this is the what the hex bit looks like. So this is gonna fit, and you can drive them all in with your drill and set your clutch to like midway or something like that, and then hand tighten the rest so you don't strip them out. And then I'm gonna do the same for these bolts for screwing this together. <clears throat> um, there, there are Phillips, or you can use a nut driver. Um, I believe it's a metric size, but my 1132nd nut driver um, does fit it. So I'll hook that up to my drill and those will go in pretty easily. This helps speed things up. I think if you don't have these extra little tools, uh, it is gonna take you a lot longer to hand um, drive this stuff in. So you're definitely gonna need you know, battery power drills, um, for these bolts, you're going to need a uh, electric like impact drill or something a little bit stronger. Um, 
But anyhow, I just want to give you that other quick tip if you are thinking about putting this gazebo together. All right, guys, so I'm starting to put the framing up. I'm actually by myself right now, so I don't even have a hand. But I wanted to show you this if you were thinking about it or you needed to do the framing by yourself. All I did was I used my 10-foot uh, ladder. And I knew that if I just sat on top as I'm moving around, it would shift and fall off. So I just simply tied it off. Um, just used a little piece of cord and tied it to it. That way there's some room for it to kind of move around. Um, and then I'm just standing. I don't have another step ladder out here. Uh, so I'm just standing on the cooler that I had out for drinks and I can easily stand on that and lift this back where into place and and screw go around and screw these on so basically I put two on on the ground and got it up and tied to the ladder and I add the third one and now we're ready to put the fourth one on so uh, I can show you what that looks like as I do that Fourth corner keeps sliding off, but that's okay. I got all four now, and I can go. So now that I have all four uh, temporarily up, I don't, I didn't, um, I used a real light clutch so that there's some room to go back and adjust them and tighten them up the rest of the way. But now I should be able to go around at least get one corner um, bolted in and move the ladder and then do the other three. So that's how I was doing it by myself. Seems to be working okay, but it's kind of just rigged up there for the time being. Um, and then when my wife gets back, she'll be able to help me out with the rest. But I just wanted to keep moving because it's starting It's starting to rain. <clears throat> all right, quick update. <clears throat> so I was able to get all the brackets on laying across um, by myself, but I wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to hoist it up from working like by myself from one side or another. So what I did was I made a two by four jig um to help hoist it up to the proper height basically just an eight foot two by four with two scrap pieces of uh you know planks that I had you could use plywood or whatever and i screwed it um into the bottom of the two by four and then i needed about um 18 inches to two foot i wasn't 100 percent sure so let me get the ruler here this box is a foot so it's basically eight foot nine foot total nine and a half feet roughly and that's about where i need to be as you can see to start um screwing these in so i think that should work out pretty good and then i can uh it'll it'll move a little bit and give me some some wiggle room if i need it so anyhow i just wanted to show you guys that quick tip if you are doing this by yourself you should be able to hoist it up and um all I did was stand in at this position, just lifted it straight up and dropped it on the box. So uh, I didn't have a, a 10 foot board. So I just used the eight foot and stuck it on something. So anyhow, I hope that helps you guys if you're trying to build this uh, by yourself like I am today. <clears throat> What's going on guys? I am finally finished this project. Um, we still need to paint the concrete, get the furniture, the fire pit and 
I still need to bolt in the two posts that have the newer concrete, but check it out. Here's what it looks like. There she is. Um, the roof actually wasn't too bad. Um, I did make sure everything was square before I started. I really didn't have any issues. So, give you an idea of what it looks like. It has some landscaping to do. I need to put in a little mini retaining wall on the back. But, um, really happy with it for the price. I think it's great. Um, so like I said, what I ended up doing is my pad was 10-3 wide and I needed a little bit more. So I just scored, um, see I put a little score in the plate there with a grinder, just a, uh, just a slight little um, score and then bent it over with a hammer, so folded it over. And basically, um, they're all bent over. These are already anchored in, as you can see. I use the Tapcon anchors on that. But um, I haven't anchored these in yet, just because this is fresh concrete. I was gonna wait a, probably about a week before I actually bolted it, so. And here's what the inside looks like. We think we're gonna do like a, uh, a light, maybe a light fan combo. And I'm gonna run electric over here from my, from my shed, so. Yeah, really happy with it. Not like here. That's what it looks like. I'm actually underneath the apple tree right now. But the quality of it is pretty decent considering the price. So. Well, anyhow, I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. Uh, pretty familiar. If you, have, if you do buy one, you have any, need any questions or tips on how to uh, install it, just go ahead and throw them down in the comments. And I should be able to answer them because it took me I would say I worked on it about six hours yesterday. Um, I had to do a couple hours on Friday, today's Sunday, but on Friday I put in this pad and then Saturday morning I finished that. So um, yesterday was Saturday, I probably put in around six hours on and off working on it. And then today probably, I would say at least an hour six or seven doing the roof. Uh, it is almost five o'clock now. I started at like 8 a.m., but I also um, was doing some other stuff. So I just cut the grass and stuff. So it, didn't, it wasn't nonstop working, but I would say 10 to 12 hours, definitely. And at least two people. Um, you can do a lot of it by yourself, but it's really nice having someone help you just because you need a bolt or a screw. Someone can go grab that for you. So anyhow, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, please uh, like, share, subscribe all of the above i know this is a little bit different from what you guys are used to and maybe i'll do a follow-up when we're completely finished i still have the little edging uh these little trim plates to put down but i'm gonna wait till we paint first i'm gonna put some concrete paint down but those go on like that and i'm gonna paint over the the paint the plate that's exposed so you'll still kind of see it but most of it'll be covered up by paint and um we, we're getting ready to order furniture and a fire pit. So maybe I'll do a follow-up. If you guys want to see that, put a comment down below. And um, when it's finished, maybe I'll link to that video. And I did not do a time-lapse video. There was just too much going on. The kids were home. The wife was helping. So it was just easier to uh, just do a couple short segment videos. So I know earlier I mentioned there may be a time-lapse. There will not be a time-lapse video. But anyhow, thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching. Remember to hit that thumbs up, hit that like button, and until uh, next time, this is Dan from Liquidation Pros. See ya.